Griswold up for Onizuka, who was calling for it at the far blue line. Tucks through one man. Onizuka by himself. Backhand saved by Connor Young. Blue line, he fakes the shot, comes Varela near side. The right, he fires one, and that one's into the shoulder. Had he missed, it might have gone home. Loose out front again, kicked away by Lucas. In lots of room for Kramer up top. He fires one into the chest and into the mask of Cortez. And he's into the net. The clear attempt goes to McElhinney off the boards. It's an oh, all deflect off an offender and went in. Two shots on goal, period. Make it three. Oh, the shot. oh he scores! Wow. Take it away. He's got a little bit of a seam. Lance has closed that quickly. A backhander comes into Alarcon. Right to center out front. It makes it to McGowan. Branson makes a diving save. It's loose to the crease. Play is a two on one. Point weighted. Stay outside. Yao shoots and a save by Kurth again. Roderick and Mayhew battle for it. Comes near side. Shot by oh. Stomp. Oh, wow. went in. Wow. Looking for help. Pulls up. Still not coming. Avoids the check. Finds Onizuka down the middle. On net. Big save by Ryan Mack. He sends it in between a couple oh. defenders. He breaks free. And he's going to have a shot and a save by Pavelson. Beat Conejo Valley. Uh -oh. Just by a goal. Come back. Redmond cruising into the net to the way. Here's Evan Kamba. He's trying to weave his way through the defense. Pushes it toward the net. High shot. Glove down. Right to Guillaume Bose. Near side for Southwell. Double clutches. And Branson gets back to make the save. Not like that's a rivalry or anything, no matter what the sport is. <laughs> ben Dyke to Romans, who shoots, and that one goes off of Taylor's. Turned over. Shane Gilbert with a rush and a lot of open ice. Gilbert with a shot, saved by Young. The middle turns it over, though. Webster's got it into the middle. Yolas with a shot, a save. Locust becomes the Paulus. Backdoor pass, Mayhew shoots, and a save by Kurt, who came out to the top of the crease. Oh, and a big collision down. Into the Newport Mesa and Rip. Pabitsky from Durego. They're looking for another one here as the period is winding down. Just five seconds to go. Loses it on the check. A stuff attempt on the near side. Young has lost it. He has to come back. And a huge glove save by Connor Young. This is the Anaheim Ducks High School Hockey League Weekly Report on ADHSHL.com and Black Dog Enterprises. Hello again, everyone. Andy Dickerson here to bring you the top plays from a jam-packed Week 10. We start with a Friday night matchup between Orange Lutheran and Damien. The last time these teams met, the Lancers put up seven goals in the first and ran away with it 10 0. Better effort this time out by the Spartans as they held the powerful Lancers off the board until late in the first when Riley Kramer scored a beautiful short handed goal. After Nolan McElhaney's first of two scores on the night pushed the lead to 2 0, AJ Frosch and Austin Alarcon combined to stifle the Spartan offense. Kramer then fed Chase Young, who ripped it by Matthew Cortez to make the lead 3-0. The Lancers took care of business in the third with a spinnerama score from Grady O'Brien and a well-placed wrister from Jacob Nelson that polished off a 6-0 win for Olu. Frosch and Alarcon split the shutout, the Lancer team's fourth of the season. Stephen Goodman registered three assists from the blue line. Next up was the Varsity D2 Game of the Week between two one-loss squads in Villa Park and San Diego Union. Red Hawks goaltender Owen Kurth would see a lot of rubber in this one, making one of his 13 first period stops here. Seconds later though, Vale Artizone wired a wrister past Kurth to give Villa Park the early lead. After breaking through the Spartan defense, Tatu Kuntos wrist shot, got a piece of Anders Holkren, but had enough to make it past him to tie the score. Right off the ensuing faceoff, Andrew Hoyt broke in and went far down to restore the Spartans lead. Second period, Kenzie DeKaiser denied Cameron Roark a breakaway chance with a great back check. That opened the door for the Spartans at the offensive end as they netted two goals in a span of 25 seconds. Evan Canba capped the Spartans' run with a short side snipe to make it 5-1 by the end of the frame. The Red Hawks would get two goals back in the third, but a late power play goal by Kyle Mayhew sealed the deal. Bella Park 6, San Diego Union 3. In bonus Varsity D2 action, Corona Norco took on Newport Mesa. With a recent one-goal defeat to the Stingrays on their minds, the Ice Kings came out firing, and Sam Weisner, he of a hat trick in the team's last meeting, got them on the board early with his seventh of the season. Weisner was matched stride for stride by Ryan Romans two weeks back, and Romans repeated the feat early in this one with a goal of his own four minutes later. Andrew Braun got into the act physically with a big hit on Patrick Standell, but Standell replied minutes later on the scoreboard with a goal to give the lead back to the Ice Kings. Braun then answered back with a power play goal a minute later. This conversation would continue throughout the game, but Colin Redmond cut in near the end of the period with a strong post-to-post -post move and score. 3-2 Ice Kings at the end of one. 
A Stingray scoring spree that spanned the entire middle frame was started by Braun seven minutes later as his second of the night just trickled over the line. Strikes by Josh Mills and Jeremy Van Dyke gave the Stingrays a 5-3 lead heading into the third period. That's when Weisner single-handedly willed his team back into the game with a net-circling unassisted tally here and then a short-handed mini breakaway that tied the score up at five apiece. Weisner almost made it a four-goal night with a near miss, but that set up a dramatic finish. Could be a two-on-one the other way as Corona Norco takes it away. Cassio ahead of the pack with Mills behind him. Shot, save, rebound, Braun, he scores! Andrew Braun on the rebound gives the Stingrays the lead with a minute and 21 to go. Braun's hat-trick completing third of the night gave the Stingrays the lead. Connor Locus made a couple great stops down the stretch, and Corona Norco pulled out another one-goal win over the Ice Kings. 6-5 the final score. Our final game of the weekend in Anaheim featured the Servite Friars and the Edison Chargers. Fast forward to the second period, Friars up 1-0. Jake Pope tapped in a pass from Drew Trucksaw to tie things up. A persistent Friars trio of Nicholas Rutkowski, Blake Hammer, and Nick Mothy finally cashed in with Mothy's second of the night, but the Chargers would dominate the rest of the period. Two goals came from the stick of Jake Geely, both from right around the blue paint, and Chris Pavitsky added to their newfound lead with only 14 seconds left in the frame. The avalanche of goals did not slow up in the final period as Jacob Long snuck one through Spencer Dennis's legs 30 seconds in, then Pope popped in his second just over a minute later, and then Dennis made a couple of huge saves with a little help from an early whistle to keep his lead at two. It wouldn't last though as Blake Hammer drew the Friars back within one with under six minutes left. Seconds later, Carson Durego did his best Bobby Orr impression to restore the two goal lead and Drew Trucksaw gave the Chargers their largest lead of three goals to complete a string of three goals between the two teams in under a minute. Mothy completed his hat trick on a tip of a Rutkowski blast, but that's all the Friars would get before the final buzzer sounded. The Chargers came away with a 7-5 victory. Up in San Jose, Jay, Sarah, and Bellerman kicked off a two-game set on Saturday night. The hometown Bells jumped out front on a slick bar-down backhand by Guillaume Bose, who celebrated in front of his school's yell squad. Jared Southwell followed that up with a power play goal to double their lead. On a power play of their own in the second, the Lions pulled within one as Casey Onizuka wheeled a tricky backhander on net that beat Ryan Mack. Shane Gilbert then rushed in and fed Sage Fleming out front for a one-timer that tied the score at two. Fleming picked up his second of the night after a strong rush by Mason Pilkington, popped the water bottle too, a heck of a shot. That score was only bested by Pilkington's rush through Bell defender Diego Rebillar and passed a helpless Mac for a brilliant power play score. Penalties piled up for the Bells, 90 minutes total to be exact, and Francis LeMay potted the dagger on this tic-tac-toe play late. Five unanswered goals and 17 saves by Lucas Franson powered the Lions' 5-2 win. I mentioned the Bells' penalties. They would be left without Captain Gabe Silva, defenseman Steven Lencioni, and head coach David Guy due to suspension for the following morning's rematch. Their absence didn't seem to affect the team early as they once again compiled a 2-0 lead thanks to a power play goal by Dean Clements and Guillaume Bose's third goal in as many games. The Lions showed their resilience again though as Pilkington rushed the puck ahead, split the D, and laid off a beautiful dish for Sage Fleming to tap in. Fleming then jammed home a loose puck at the side of the net less than a minute later and we were tied up at two apiece. The wild opening frame continued as Clements capitalized on a turnover and flipped a backhander through Franson to net a short-handed tally, his second overall of the morning. Late in the period, Brendan Pagani beat Connor Young high short side to tie the game back up. After a dominant shift, Casey Onizuka fed Zach Fiedler at the point and then finished off the rebound to give the Lions a 4-3 lead. Tennis match continued late in the second as Jared Southwell beat Franson from distance to tie things up at four. That was Southwell's fifth goal in as many games. Early third now, Fleming delays inside the blue line and finds a streaking Pagani fresh off the bench. He beats Young from a ways out and the Lions retake the lead. Southwell just missed the net on a one-time effort to tie it up later in the period and that would prove costly as minutes later, Onizuka stepped in from the point and fired one past Young to give the Lions the cushion they needed. They would hang on for a 6-4 win and would go home happy with a two-game sweep. 
It should be noted that the Bells had two players that required medical attention near the end of this game, Scott Ham and Asim Jain. We want to wish them both a speedy recovery and hope to see them out on the ice again soon. Looking around the league, there were two other games in Varsity Division II this past weekend as Conejo Valley skated past Los Alamitos for a 6-3 victory. Three different goal scores for the Griffins, six different scores for the Cobras, though. Jaguar Lawrence recorded two assists for the winning side. Meanwhile, on the Olympic surface at the rinks at Anaheim, Capistrano United faced a tough test from Upland Christian but came out on top by a 4-2 score. Austin Erickson recorded two assists for the Coyotes, while Tyler Tillman did his best for the Eagles, making 25 saves in the losing effort. The Lancers stay undefeated atop the varsity D1 standings with seven wins and 20 points. Below them, only three points for the equivalent of one regulation win separate the second through fifth place teams, Servite, Edison, J. Sarah, and Santa Margarita. Bellarmine is stuck in neutral in sixth place, having lost their last four contests, all at home in San Jose, and Damian checks in at the bottom of the table, winless in six tries thus far. In Varsity Division II, the Coyotes are in first place by three points over Villa Park and Conejo Valley. There's a big drop-off down to San Diego Union at 12 points and Long Beach Prep at nine points, though both of those squads have a game in hand on the top squads. Newport Mesa is the only winless team remaining in the division, but are getting much closer to putting one in the win column, having suffered back-to-back one-loss defeats at the hands of Corona Norco. Three games on tap this Saturday as San Diego Union takes on Upland Christian at 1.15 p.m. in the Varsity D2 Game of the Week. Then at 3.15 p.m. we'll switch back to Division 1 with Damian and Santa Margarita, and we'll finally finish up with Servite versus the resurgent J. Sarah Lions at 5.15 p.m. That does it for this week's report. We'll do it all again next week. In the HSHL, I'm Andy Dickerson. So long, everyone.